one of the first things you can do when you wake up from surgery is just gently palpate around your knee with your fingertips literally bending the legs of a butterfly pressures with the tips of your fingers feeling around for where the joint feels swollen with hard a harder sensation these are the areas where the probes go in and by you simply crawling around your knee with your fingertips you will help that pent-up fluid evacuate from the knee you don't have to do it for very long and you'll find the knee immediately feels easier getting up to get your leg off the bed for the f for the first time is also something that is helped by preparing it to move again with your weight on it and this little pumping action of the knee will feel very alien to start with but it will make it much easier for you to walk bending the knee when you do get up and wait bare for the first time now you will see this is a slightly different action where you're, you're lifting the heel rather than just bending the knee this uses the vastus medialis inside thigh muscle which runs down the inner side of your upper leg and this muscle is responsible for the last 15 degrees of straightening it may feel quite strange to do this and it certainly stretches the back of the knee pumping the fluid away that's collected after the surgery if you're awake enough this is all preparatory to getting up for the first time and then you can just go back to your gentle bending the legs of a butterfly fingertip pressures very very gentle pressures in preparation for getting you up walking where the very important full straightening of the knee must be started as soon as possible with your walking remembering to be avoided at all costs is walking ever again with your knee not fully straight i.e. walking on a bent knee the compression bandage you see here to stop the knee swelling stays on for 24 hours but it's important to stop the lower leg swelling through the constriction of not letting the venous blood return so it's important too to keep your foot moving using the muscles of your lower leg to pump blood back up past the ligature of the bandage and back to your heart so whenever you think of it just move your foot in and out feeling the ankle stretch feeling it stretch behind your knee and creating a lovely pumping action as you see here you don't need to go berserk during these exercises if you do do too much your knee will be more sore and angry these little procedures are just simply to help you make a more speedy recovery but perhaps more important to get that leg over the bed and onto the floor in preparation for your first steps and here we go pushing the knee back as you go then to raise yourself with both feet to the floor you can begin your weight transferring with the left knee braced back as much as possible and just simply tilting from left to right but you must only take weight 
through that left leg if it's straight at the knee you'll find it much you'll feel the muscles switching on and that pressurizing the capsule containing the fluid to give you support through that joint and keep the two surfaces apart then you can increase the wideness and transfer your weight across a wider base with that knee braced another exercise unweighted leaning on a bench or the fridge door just pushing the leg back getting the leg used to being straight to take weight and then down as soon as the leg goes to the floor make sure you brace it back before you take weight on that leg this uses the vastus medialis muscle on the inside of your thigh and creates pressure inside the fluid sac separating the two bones this stops you grinding as you take weight to take that step good now with the bandage removed a block of ice which is made from freezing a paper cup of water much better than a polystyrene cup which is so bad for the environment you just simply drive around the knee with the ice exposed to the skin for a minute or two or less which is so effective at reducing swelling and getting rid of the pain it's so much more effective than using cold that doesn't melt all to do with latent heat and you can go over the top of the incisions because you've got waterproof dressings on there and you can do this every time after you've done exercises that threaten to inflame the knee remember the inflammatory reaction is all normal and your job is to minimize it as much as you can you can also go in behind the knee in here where the swelling tends to collect at the back and one or two minutes of this is incredibly effective and there you go have a towel under the bed under the knee I should say on the bed that short regime of exercises can be done twice a day it takes a total of about five or ten minutes each time apply the ice afterwards and then the tuber grip which has now replaced the bandage which helps t to keep control the s controlling the swelling remember if you do too much you'll be sore and it's very important in the first few days post-op that you take the full complement of anti-inflammatories and painkillers do expect that the second and third day post-op is the most painful don't fret about that there you go second day post-op you can start doing your bending and straightening from 90 degrees sitting on a high surface with a towel behind your knee so you don't hurt the back of the knee and at the bottom again you can let your whole leg relax and the weight of the leg drag the joint apart and then straightening again bring your toe back towards you that helps you get as straight as you possibly can behind the knee to 180 degrees no lag at all and you only do about five or six of these in one session coming right up to straight and then let go